inter cma scmp sfm we are in sfm today friends those who are writing group 2 tomorrow i am coming live okay scmp is super 50 we have five questions pending all these five are atom bomb questions standard costing questions transfer pricing questions and you have a chapter called a cellular manufacturing so i'm going to do those questions tomorrow so if you are writing scmp you can attend that session One moment, let us just, just come. Okay. Assignment not found. Okay. Full syllabus test. We have 418 people, friends, who have enrolled for mentoring, and only 14 people have actually submitted the assignment. Hats off to these 14 people. I will be appreciating this separately in the group also. You must understand 418 students is not someone who I have pushed and asked them to join this batch. All right, they have voluntarily joined this batch as a part of mentoring, as a part of doing this mock test. But by the time we reach the end, because of multiple other pressures, people slowly start diluting. So if you see the percentage that you see over here, 14 divided by 418, we are talking about hardly 3% of the people have actually been submitting the answers. And I think many of the names are very much familiar to me from what I see over here. Veena, I think I'm seeing you from the first mock test itself, Sudha, even you, many others also. Sarvamangala, I think from the time of Chennai, Chennai class got over, you're consistently doing all the examinations. Hari Shankar, you too. Great job, all of you. Keep it up. Gayatri, excellent. Even she has done it. Is Gayatri live? I think she's not live. All right. Fine. So let's do one thing now. I want to catch someone who has already done the paper and who's live right now. Sarvamangala is, is live. Veena is also live. I think I will take, Veena, have I taken your paper before? I don't think so. If that's the case, I'll take your paper now and we'll start discussing with your paper. You have taken it last time, is it? Okay, then I'll take Sarva Mangala. Can I take your paper? Did I take it last time? No, right? All right, I'm taking your paper right now. Perfect. Let's start off and I will take the question paper also here. So friends, I'm going to correct keeping her uh, answer sheet. Okay. Okay. This is our answer sheet. So we are going to do it based on this full portion test. Excellent. Okay. This is the question paper. So the first question I think is similar. I think we have done this question earlier also in one of the exams, if I'm not wrong. Correct. I believe yes, because in uh, international financial management, this is one of the most popular questions. Apart from this, in MTP, which I'm going to do it on, I think Thursday or Friday, I think I'm doing it on Thursday. I will do one more question on uh, this chapter. One beautiful question has come in MTP, better than this question, tougher than this question. I'm not sure whether they will ask that type of questions in the exam, but once you do that question, any question on international financial management will look easy for all of you. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So you did question one later. That's fine. Sarva Mangala, you went to question number two B first, is it? That will be good time management because this question is a very lengthy question. Let's see what is two B. Two A, two B. All right, 2B was a very easy question. Good time management, Sarva Mangala. So this question can be done very quickly. It was done in my regular class also. And it's a very hot question for the ICI exams also. Okay, so this question, AIC 6%, etc. Fixed cost you have given as 24,000. I believe that's correct. 24 or 20? I think it's 24,000, correct. And then you have the floating rate payment is coming to 19,835. All right, and the net settlement, you get the answer as 4164. Excellent. You are having three requirements over here. You can give three marks for requirement number one, three marks for requirement number two, and two marks for requirement number three. Okay, let me just uh, 
upload the solution also here first. I will forget it afterwards. Okay, the solution is getting uploaded. One, let's, let's cross check, let's cross check. Test series suggested answer. Let me upload the answer in the app first. Done. Okay, I have uploaded. Let me open the solution now. Number what I remember was 20,000, but let's check. Maybe the numbers are slightly different here. 2B, you get 20,000, 24,000. Second one, you get 20,120. Sarva Mangala, you have done it using uh, how many days? 365, is it? Okay, you are supposed to take 360 days always. All right. Uh, let's check in the question. Have they mentioned any number of days? They have told 30 bar 360 only, right? Okay, they haven't given that one year is going to be 360 days. Sarva Mangala, you want me to unmute you? Yes, please speak. Uh, hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Sarva Mangala. Tell me. Uh, sir, as they had mentioned that generic swap is based on 30 by 360. So, which is why for generic, I had taken divided by 360. Okay, I, so I will the... explain that part to you now. See, okay, in our, uh, there's a question in the study material also. Normally, it's always the fixed payments are always on 30 bar 360 only. All right. Whereas the floating is supposed to be on the actual number of days. So as you told, as per the strict theory, it should be 360 days only. However, in our study material, we have a question where despite all this, they have done that based on 365. I think I did that question in class. Do you remember when vanilla swap? Uh, I'll just show you the solution right away now so we get clarity on that. Yes, Sarva Mangala, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'll just take the study material. I'll show you right away now. Final SFM October. We are talking about interest rate risk management. Right. I think there was a question with the heading of vanilla swap. Yes. Question yes. number five. Okay. This question they have solved using 365 days. As you yes. told, ideally they should do it using what? 360 days. So they have, what they have done, they have solved it using 365 and now they have given. Alternatively, answer can be done using 360 days. Are you getting my point? Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, I think it's much safer to go from 360 days point of view because the theory speaks about 360 days only all right okay sir. okay sir. so you do one thing we get uh, will be strict in valuation here you deduct okay. the three marks or two marks for this floating rate payment okay okay sir. Got and it. also deduct uh two uh, sorry it's it's eight marks right three three two so you deduct uh two and two deduct four marks give yourself four out of eight okay sir. the first case i've done it 360 days sir. second case only i made a mistake of correct so first case i'm that's why i told you three marks for the first case okay sir one mark for the remaining two cases. All right. Okay, got, it. got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think we are done with that. Uh, let me go to the next one. I believe I'm live on YouTube also now. Excellent. Let me continue. So I was here. Let me go to the next part. So next settlement basis. So 2B is over. Can I go to the next question? Next one is 2C. Sarva Mangala, you have to improve your handwriting. It has to be legible, okay? Uh, I suggest you stay unmuted with me so I can discuss with you and we can discuss. Can you please raise your hand, Sarva Mangala? Yes, keep yourself unmuted, okay? Sure, sir. Right. So here in this question, let me just see question number 2C. Explain the mode of financing in uh, finance. Uh, what is the mode of financing is called in startups? 
find a new okay so they want to run bootstrapping is the name what have you written over oh, here okay oh, personal it's bootstrapping bootstrapping i think you have read the word personal savings bank loan they are all there but i think what's the question let's read again uh found a business and from the personal revenues it's bootstrapping if you're doing it from okay, your sir. own revenue it's called bootstrapping okay okay sir. let's check confirm it here it's called as bootstrapping some other methods are trade credit factory leasing etc all right so methods in personal financing may include so that's wrong uh, sarva mangala you'll have yeah, to sure. mark it okay. sure sir sure sir right Viveka, if you write headings, how many marks will you get? Why did you write only the headings, Viveka? Write something inside also. If you write only the headings, that's a very confusing question. It's a four mark. You have put only the headings. Maybe they'll give you one mark or one and a half marks because explanation is very very important. Okay, Anuja, you also got twenty triple one. I think uh, I have explained the marks valuation for that part. Okay. Viveka, because of time, but then you will lose marks. You will get only one and a half. You can put one and a half out of four. Okay, right. Can I go to the next question now? Okay, next one is question number two A. Two A is a question on India Nepal. We have done a similar question called as African rand. So you have the inflation of eleven percent here. Indian inflation is ten percentage. Spot rate is one point. Six five. Okay. So yeah, I made a mistake in this question. This some sort of the inflation part of it I not considered. Okay. So I I made a mistake in this one. You have made a mistake here. That's fine. Let me just check forward. You have written equation wise it's correct. R F one plus eleven percent. One minute. What is the exchange rate? Is it rupee per Nepali currency or N C bar rupee? N C bar rupee. Yeah. It is an inflation. It's NC bar rupee, is it? No, it is. Uh, yeah, NC bar rupee. So RH will be NC. Did you take it as NC? Perfect. Divided by ten. Forward one point double six five. Cash flows you have got in Nepal as minus thirty eight. One point six six five. Why have you taken one point six six five everywhere? Uh, yes, yeah, so sir. This is where I have not considered the inflation. I have realized my mistake. But then I already okay. uploaded it, so. Okay. 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 No worries. No worries. So I think you're clear with what has to be done over there, right? Yes, sir. One second. Okay. Right. So let me go to the next part now. I think this part is incorrect. So I'll show you the final correct answer over here. Two A, so two A, right? So all right. So here you get the forward rate as one point double six five, one point six eight. One point six nine five seven one zero seven two six. So then you should convert like that and get the rupee. Once you get the rupee, then you know you have to take the cash flow in India, cash flow in Nepal, total present value, and then you should do the NPV. All right. Ah, uh, this question. How many requirements? I think there's only one requirement. If I'm not wrong, correct? Yes, sir. NPV. That's it. So those who all have got the final this working note correct, you will get full marks. I'll give you a minute. Please give yourself marks for this question. All right, friends. Can I go to the next question now? Okay. So next one is. Uh, let me take a solution first. So Sarva Mangala, you are at a bad start. You started with very good strategy, easy questions, but somehow the answers went wrong. Is it? Do this paper once again. It will become all right then. Okay. Don't worry. Yes, 
Sure. Yes, now we are talking about question number 4A. Question number 4A. Okay, it's a question. EBIT is given, CapEx is given, depreciation is given, high growth, stable growth. It's a question on valuation. So, value of any asset is nothing but present value of future cash flows. X is 150 crore, 140, 10. Post tax KD, you got 9.1. 16.9, 1 is to 1, 13%, 12%. This answer is correct. I think we have done the same question in my class also. Correct? Yes. Cash flows you have. I think revenue stream is different. I think 10, 12, 14, 17. Then you take a 10 percentage. Saramangala, don't write like this in on top. Okay. Plus 20, plus 20. Okay. Yes, sir. That may create a negative impression. Bracket, you give the formula. 1000 into 1.2. Okay, sir. All right. Fine. EBIT, etc. So you get minus 185. 28, 33.6, 40.32, 156.38. Now, year zero cash flow is not relevant. All right, fine. So, value of business, you took 28, 33, etc. You got 5497. Present value of perpetual cash flow 4 will be CF5. Hold on. Here we have 1, 2, 3. Okay, so P3 will be cash flow 4. All right. You get 7819. That's taken over there. And you get the value as 5497, is it? Five four nine seven. Let's check. What's the question number? Four A. So four A. Four A. Five four nine seven. The answer is absolutely right. Uh, Sarva Mangala, you can give yourself full marks for this question. Eight out of eight. Okay. Friends, remember one thing in SFM, if your answer is 100% correct, you get full marks, no deduction. Okay, right. So please give yourself marks based on this. All right, friends. Are you all done with this part? Can I go to the next one? Yes. Next question. Uh, Parvati, if only the terminal value is wrong, this question is having how many marks in total? Eight marks, correct? So in eight marks, you can do one thing. You can give yourself five marks. Three marks you can give for the terminal value. Because the most important adjustment is terminal value only. 4C. Briefly, the principles on which technical analysis is based. Yes, this market discounts everything. Price moves in trends. Very good. History repeats itself. Amazing. That answer is right, Sarva Mangala. They are the only three points. You can give... Uh, wait, uh, Sarva Mangala not able to hear me. Others, are you able to hear me? Audible, right? Can you hear me, Sarva Mangala, now? Not able to hear? I think others are able to hear. Sarva Mangala, I think I'll just send her a message. Okay, let me just go to the next question. So, four marks. Fine. I've asked her to log out and log in. Okay. So fine. So here it will be uh, four marks completely will be given to Sarva Mangala for this question. You also, if you have put these three points, you get full marks because these are the only three points given in the study material. All right. Now, next one. What is the next question she has done? 4B is left. Let me check 4B because 4B is a question on mutual fund. Friends, they have given the shares and NAV. Can you hear me, Sarva Mangala? Can you hear me now? There is some technical issue then. You can hear me? All right. 
uh, I have given you permission to unmute. I am not able to hear you. Are you speaking there? That's fine. Then you can just send a message if you're unable to speak. I'm not able to hear what you're speaking. I think I'm not able to hear you, right? That's okay. Leave it. You can just send a message. So mutual funds question, it's on NAV. What is the concept of NAV? All the assets at realizable price minus the liability at realizable price. So here, all these are assets, equity, share, government securities, NCD, listed debentures. Okay. Then they have received a dividend of 8 lakhs. Interest is also given over here. And, you know, bonus data are provided below. They are asking you to find out the NAV. Let me take the solution for this one. 4B. They have talked about the opening cash. Dividend they have received. Interest also they have got. So like that, they get the total. Minus expense will give you the closing cash balance. So they get cash, government securities, equity share, NCD, debenture, total assets. Number of units will give you the NAV per unit. Everybody clear with this part? Then they have told if 0.5 is paid, it will be 13.22 minus 0.5. And annualized return is going to be NAV1 minus NAV0. That is giving you 32.2 percentage. Please do this. If you have any doubts, let me know. All right. Okay, so Sarvamangala, the time was a shortage. Okay. They only say interim dividend declared. Why are we adjusting the cash balance? Hold on. Let me just cross check. Viveka, can you please raise your hands, Viveka? I can interact with you and understand. Interim dividend. You, are, you just have to raise your hands, Viveka. I will unmute you. One minute. Yes. Now you can unmute. Please check. Yes. Can you hear me, Viveka? Yes, sir. So in the question, they say AGM declared the interim dividend of 10%. They haven't said that they paid the interim dividend. So why are we adjusting the cash balance? Okay, hold on. Let me the dividends. Where is it told? Uh, XYZ Limited on 15 December 2021. Okay, has declared its interim dividend and bonus shares. Okay, they're trying to say that they haven't actually paid this dividend is what you're trying to say. But when you yes, come sir. to the solution part, Solution, they have taken the dividend received as 8 lakhs, is it? One moment. Dividends of 8 lakhs was... Hold on, no, there are two parts. 8 lakhs was received on equity share. Apart from that, they are saying that interim dividend was declared. Am I right? Uh, yes, sir. So, one 8 lakh of dividend is separate. All right. And then second, they have told... Uh, below that, they have told another interim dividend has been declared. So, yes, 8 lakhs is actually lakhs received. Is Okay, yes, eight lakhs is clear, just the interim dividend. This part is your doubt. Is it 2.5 they have considered over here? But the question says it is declared. Hold on, let's check. Uh, 15 December, in its AGM, they declared interim dividend of 10 percentage. Hold on. Uh, what is the closing date given in the question? 1-1-2021, one, one, is it? Uh, no, no, no. What is the closing date? December. 20. 21st December. 31st. December. So if, they if they declare on 15 December, is there any companies that rule stating that it should be paid within 15 days or something like that? Uh, yes, sir. Is it there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If that is the case, then they are bound Even, to pay this, right? Uh, okay. Okay, but we can't. Uh, okay. Okay, sir. 
we are not good at companies act if, if companies act says once you declare within 15 days you are supposed to pay the dividend then we have to assume that they are going to uh, you know yeah bhavya declared it has to be paid but when is it is it supposed to be paid within 15 days or after one month also is acceptable no i think it's 15 or 14 days if that is the case then yes we can show this okay All okay right? sir Perfect, Thank you. Perfect. All right. Now, Achcha, yeah, while computing annual return, why didn't we take the revised NAV of 12.72 is your question. Achcha, I'll explain answer for that now. See, when you do the NAV, yeah, it's taken 12.72 is done in option number two. You can see that here. Am I right? Either you can do it like this or you can do it like this. All right. Perfect. So I think we are done with this question. Just give yourself marks, friends. Hold on, friends. Wait, wait, wait. My laptop is charged is on, but it is saying no charge. Just give me a moment. Okay. One moment, friends. Plug this. Okay, that's getting charged now. Right. Can I go to the next question now, friends? Right. I'm going to the next question. 1A. Okay, so the first question that we earlier had kept pending. So when you do question number 1A, investment in plant and machinery is given, working capital is given, straight line method, 2 million units, selling price. Sarva Mangala, you don't uh, write like this, okay? You put it in bracket here. You cannot write down on the left side like this. Okay. This you can draw it, but with a pencil, not with a pen. Diagrams only with pencil, okay? Right. Now selling price per unit, variable cost per unit done with pencil is it your pencil and pen look almost the same sarva mangala all right let me come down now okay now here proposed project analysis we see additional cash fixed cost i don't think you can use the short form like this fc is okay acceptable addn i don't think is acceptable Allocated fixed cost, useful life. Again, production capacity or written only PROD capacity. I don't think even that is acceptable. Okay. Wow, 16 million minus 25 million, existing 25 million. You have to give a note for why you are deducting this 25 million. 98, 60, 39, 525 is correct. If you come down, 170.8 is correct. Contribution minus fixed cost, representing PBT. All right, this is also correct. Terminal cash flow 35 million is also correct. Excellent. All right. I think then you go to the NPV. Uh, you cannot draw like this. This part you need to improvise. Okay. This is not allowed. This you cannot put full numbers over here. And where is the heading rupees in lakh Sarva Mangala? That's also not there. Okay. So please be careful. It's there, is it? Okay, excellent. Then fine. Is it there everywhere? Million dollars. Yes, good. If anybody has not put that, please deduct your marks. Okay. NPV is positive. Sarvamangala, your answer is correct. Let others also cross-check the same thing. I'll show the solution here. Yes. So here it is. I'll tell you how the markings will go. This question is almost eight marks. You are having three steps: initial, in between, terminal, and then you have NPV. So four parts are there. Each part two marks, initial cash flow two marks, in between two marks, terminal two marks, and NPV two marks. Hello. 
I'll go down now. Yes. Parvati, if you have not written rupees in lakhs, ideally speaking, the answer is completely out of your hands because something in lakhs, you have given it as blank numbers. But at least deduct half mark at every place where you haven't mentioned rupees in lakhs. Your Sarva Mangala, even after writing short forms, there was no time. Do one thing, Sarva Mangala, write down the same paper again. And trust me, this time you will finish it in 2 hours 45 minutes. I assure you. Additional cash flow. And then you have NPV. I have done this practice, wrote the same paper three times Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, it took me three and a half hours. Tuesday, two hours, 45 minutes. Wednesday, two hours, 15 minutes. Same question paper. So that is when I realized that in the examination, it's more about your conceptual clarity than your speed of writing. Okay. Yes. I believe we are done with this one. Can I go to the next question now? 1A is done. Okay. Then next one is 1C. 1C, what is net interest position risk and price risk? The risk that Sarva Mangala, you have written K, it looks like H. That an organization, organization spelling or N I S A T I O N faces because of the movements in the interest rates frequently. All right. Price risk is the value of security on investment will decrease. The risk due to changes in the value. This looks to be correct. You can give yourself two and two, four marks for that question. All right. I'll show you the suggested answer over here. Net interest position banks. It's mainly from banks point of view. All right. Price risk. The what you have meant is almost the same, Sarva Mangala. Okay, you can read through this also, but you can give yourself marks. I think theory, if it's a four mark question, give yourself three out of four. They will never give you full marks. All right. Next one. Next one is 1B. Okay, three months call option, Satya premium. It's a call option question. So S1. X price, this thing you got the expected price as 597. You got stuck. It's an easy question on uh, this thing. Call option. Sarva Mangala, one thing I have told you cash flows has to be taken in the option market, only probability from the spot market. So, one, yes, expected share price will be outcome into probability. Value of call, you will take it independently and do it. So, I'll show you the solution now. Got it? So, value of call will be taken independently. Probability outcome into probability. Expected price 17. Alternatively, they can do it this way also. You get the same answer as 17. Okay, you want me to explain the value of call option? Harishankar, I had explained to you when we did risk neutral model, we go by two steps cash flows in the option market. Probability we take in the spot market because that is the same probability in the option market. Am I right? Okay, so considering that one particular factor, if I come over here, let me just explain to you here, you have outcome so many 540 to 640. What is the exercise price told in the question 590? You have a right to buy at 590 outside market 540. Will you exercise or lapse? Lapse, lapse, lapse. Here, you have a right to buy at 590. Outside market, you can buy for 600. Exercise or lapse? exercise. How much do you make over here? 10. 10 is the cash flow in the option market into 0 0.35. That's what they would have done over here. See, 10 into 0 0.35. Hari Shankar, are you clear now? Next one, right to buy at 590, outside market 620. Exercise, you get 30. 30 has got a probability of 0 0.2. Okay. Like that, you get outcome Cash flow into probability will give you the expected value of the option. Okay. Can I go to the next part now? Perfect. So then other one. 
second requirement means okay value of the call option is nil hold on let me check that part the value of the call option at the end of three months if the exercise price prevails what do you mean by the word exercise price prevails exercise price is 590 actual price also 590 in that case you know s1 is equal to e1 you can either exercise or lapse your gp will turn out to be zero I believe you got it perfect. So I think this you got the answer as nil. Here you got 17. Last one price to be put in the stock exchange to get the value of the call option is let me check that last question. Find out the price of the shares quoted at the stock exchange to get the value of the call option as computed above. Okay, as computed above means earlier they got the answer as 17. In order to get 17, we have a right to buy at 590. Outside market, if the price is 607, only then you will exercise. How much GP will you get? 17. Premium, 17. Net profit will become zero. All right. Yes, there are four requirements. Eight marks, two marks for each requirement. Perfect. I believe you are all done with this part. Why are we not considering the premium cost? Is it? <coughs> Hold on. Uh, we are considering the premium cost, uh, Viveka. Where are we not considering the premium cost? Can you please unmute and speak to me, Viveka? Sir, in the, uh, I mean, when we are con uh, computing the net value, we are only saying like 10, 30 and 50. We are not considering the premium there to find that the net. That is because, have they given the premium in the question? Yes, sir, uh, 30 rupees. Okay, 30 is the premium. When do you pay the premium? Now or on expiry? Now. Now, so it's already paid. Historical cost, correct? Yes, sir. When you talk about value of a call option, value of any asset is nothing but present value of future cash flows. Yes, sir. So what is the profit that the buyer will make will be the value of the option. That should be the minimum premium I should charge today. Okay. Understood. That's why we don't consider premium. Even when you do risk neutral model, you don't consider premium. Go and check that. You do binomial model, you don't consider premium. You do black shoulders model, you don't consider premium because it's a historical cost paid immediately. Whether you exercise or lapse, it is not relevant for decision making. Okay. So uh, every time when we calculate the value of call, we are not going to consider premium. Value of the... call, you will not consider premium. If they ask you to find out the net profit, then you calculate premium. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Got it? Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, friends. So I believe you're all done with this question. Can I go to the next one now? Question number 6A. Sarva Mangala, you have made me go up and down the question paper. I can now feel the plight of a valuer. Okay, now this is a question on imported multi-purple machine from USA at a cost of $15,000. You can avail a loan at 19%. No, Sarva Mangala, your strategy is very good. Stick to the strategy. Okay. I'm just joking. Interest is given. However, okay, it's like that Osaka branch question, is it? Okay, fine. Let me see how it import cost, interest. I'm not sure you can use NY branch. You have to write New York. Okay. Interest duration. Commission. I don't think you can write COMM. Okay, yes, this is pencil in my branch. Okay, loan, charge commission, analysis of the option. You get 11 lakh 25,000, 53, 78, 12,34413. Loan interest, first quarter, second quarter. This looks to be correct. Let me cross check, anyways. Question number six.
Okay, twelve lakh for thirty-four four one three. Perfect. Your answer is right. Option two, you got eleven lakh sixty-six five fifty. It is eleven lakh sixty-six five fifty. Perfect. But I think you have to add it and get the answer as LC charges to be added, and you get eleven lakh seventy-eight eight ninety-four. Excellent. Your answer is right. That's just a rounding of difference. You can give yourself full marks. It's an eight mark question. Two requirements. Four marks each. Hedging part of this question. Hold on. Sarva Mangala, where is the hedging part? You got the answer right. How did you get it right if you did not understand that part? Last one is it? Okay, wait. Okay, the last part is so there are okay. So sorry, friends, there are three requirements. Okay, then we'll do one thing. We'll give it as three marks, three marks, and last one is two marks. So they are asking whether hedging is feasible or no. If there is an extra expense of thirty thousand for hedging, so what you have to do is. No hedging, you get one answer. Hedging, you get another answer. You get an advantage from hedging. That advantage you are supposed to reduce from thirty thousand and see. If thirty thousand is more than the advantage, then hedging is not worthwhile. If thirty thousand is less than the advantage, then hedging is worthwhile. Did you understand? Let's go and check the last part. I thought there were only two parts. Now see, for example, here you are getting eleven, twelve lakh thirty four in the first case, but here it is. Cost of equipment in India, so there is no hedging. Option two, eleven lakh seventy eight. You are having a hedging. So what is the benefit that you make over here? Fifty five thousand, correct? How much is the cost you are spending for hedging? Thirty thousand. Even then, you get twenty five thousand more. So in that case, you should take the hedging option. Are you clear now? Parvati, you are taken. Sorry, Parvati, you can months as the months in which case Parvati in the second part is it? There is a problem there, Parvati. I'll tell you why. To read the question, the question has very clearly used the word one eighty days. If you see over here, okay. So once they use it in days, you are supposed to do it in days only. You cannot do it in months. Second part, they have told two percent per twelve months because bankers they mention like that. So when you say two percent for twelve months, then you can take it on a monthly basis. They have not done quarterly rest. Ah, uh, that's for the second option, right? Actually, they should do for the premium part in the second option on quarterly rest. Unfortunately, they haven't done it. Both are okay. Both are okay. Ideally, they should do it for both. See, second case quarter compounding comes only in the second scenario. That is. This is the second case, right? Here, first case there is no compounding option because the loan is taken from a different bank. But this part, this fifteen thousand one fifty, when they come here for this one fifty dollar, they are supposed to do compounding, but they haven't done that. That's good. Just give the assumption, Vina. That's more than enough. You'll get full marks. All right. So I believe we are done with this question also. There are more questions to solve. Six C. Sarva Mangala has left it. A tired valuer will be happy. Interest rate swaption. That's a theory question. I'll show you the answer now. Interest rate swaption is an option with an interest rate swap. It gives the holder a right, but not the obligation to enter into interest rate swap. Okay, there are two types of swaptions: fixed rate payer swaption, fixed rate receiver option swaption, and they have given the features. They have given five points over here. In exam, if you have written at least five points, you get full marks.
All right. Okay. Can I go to the next question now? Or they are asking you to find out the tracking error. That's the next theory part. Okay. Tracking error that comes in the chapter of mutual funds. It's basically a deviation from the fund return. So normally the deviation is this slight up and down is what they call it as the tracking error. Veena, 6B. I'm going to 6B, Veena. Just give me a minute. I believe you're all done with the theory part. Can I go to the next one? 6B. Uh, Sarvamangala, have you skipped 6B also? Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll take 6B now. 50 million loan. They have given the principal. They have given the reset dates. Sell floor and buy cap agreement is checked by using LIBOR plus 50 or LIBOR. Okay, you didn't understand your down one minute. Sell floor buy cap. Premium will become nil. Okay. Rest of the things will be LIBOR plus 50 points. You have to take LIBOR, LIBOR plus 50 points and then only do it. I'll show you that answer now. Yes. Look at this. Seven was given. LIBOR plus 0.5 you take and only then. See here it's 4.75. Plus uh, 0.5 gives you 5.25. Sorry, it gives you a 5.25. What is the flow rate they have told in the question? 5, is it? Oh, then there's a mistake here. If it's 5, then only here you should have a flow payoff. You should not have a flow payoff at 4.75. And what about cap receipts? 8% for cap, is it? There has to be a cap over here. This solution is incorrect, friends. This solution is not correct. Even the days are wrong, is it? Amazing. Shall I do this question right away now? Somebody please help me with the numbers. Okay, I'll do it right away now. One moment. So I'll just start with from date, then you will have to date. Okay. So what is the opening date they have told in this question? Opening date is July 1, 1, 7, 2018. One seven two thousand eighteen. All right, and what is the first closing date that you have? Thirty one twelve two thousand eighteen. Right. So now I'll put the number of days. So that will be this minus this one eighty three. Just confirm if that's correct. Thirty one in July, August, September, October, November, December one eighty four. So it should be this minus this plus one because I need to make it including or excluding plus one, 184 days. Okay. Fine. So it's 184 days. Now, what is the LIBO rate that you have in that question? Six months LIBO rate is 7% on the first date. That is 7%. So LIBO plus 0.5% will be this plus 0.5 percentage. That is 7.5 percentage. Okay, 7.5 percentage. So now on this, what I'll do, I'll find out an interest rate calculation first. What is the notional amount? 50 million, that is 500 lakhs. 500 lakhs into this, into 184 divided by 365, correct? So you get uh, 18 lakh 90,000 
410. Just cross check if that answer is right in the first case. First case, you have taken 181 days. Parvati, no. I interest, floating interest rate, you have to take number of days only. If you take in months, you will go wrong. They have done it wrong, right? How did they get 181 days over here? That should be 184 days. That suggested is completely wrong, friends. You focus on what I am getting over here. Then I will put cap receipt, which may come or which may not come. Load payoff. Okay, then I'll write down over here net. Now let me just All right. Now here, I think I have put from to. Now I can just copy paste the whole thing from to. Okay, so here it will be whatever date over here plus one, correct? And this one would be thirty one twelve two thousand thirty six. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They have taken from instead of first July. Have they told the start date is 31 12 2018? Hold on. There are two opinions that I have seen in your suggested answer. Here, the reset date is 31 12, but they have told the loan is taken on July 1st. The question that is done in your study material, I can show you that there they have taken the start date as July 1 because ideally from July 1 onwards, you are supposed to solve the whole thing. And then after six months, on 31 12 the date gets reset so we can do it in two methodologies one we take july 1 because the loan is taken on july 1 itself option two we do it from 31 12 how do you want to do it wait what we will do is i will first give you the answer as per the correct methodology july 1 is what's logical then i will just change the solution with the dates and i will give it to you okay i can copy paste the same thing afterwards so after 31 12 what is the next date that you have 31 12 2018 then you have 36 2019 36 2019 then you have 31 12 2019 2019 then you have again 36 2020 then you have 31 12 2020 then you have 36, 2021, 31, 12, 2021. All right. Okay, done. So the number of days I just copy paste. LIBOR rate also will change, right? What is the LIBOR rate? 7 for the first date, then it will become 8%. Six percent, four point seven five percent, four point two five percent, five point two five percent. Have they given any other dates, rates over here? They are given only up to 36, 20, 21. 31, 12 is not required in that case. Okay, I'll remove this part. All right. So now, if that is the case, what will be the LIBOR plus 0.5? This is actually the correct answer. Is there any leap year coming in between friends? Please tell me. 2020 is leap year, right? Yes. So if leap year is 2020 here, what will happen here? The number of days will change. It will become, have they taken 183 correctly? That is you have 31 days in January, 29 in February, March, April, May, June, you get 182 days. 182. Why have they taken? Okay, I think I've made a small mistake. It should be this plus one. Now, 
182. This is correct, but here it will be divided by 366 over here alone. All right. Yes. The rest everything will be. Uh, I think this one also will be 366. July to December would be six months, but I think here also I should take 366, right? Please confirm. Yes, because that year as such will have 184 divided by 366. Perfect. All right. And last one will be 365 only. All right. Now tell me what is the cap rate they have told? Eight. So the moment it goes above eight, here you will get a cap receipt. So the amount would be 500 lakhs into here it will be 0 0.5 percent into what's the number of days that you have 181 divided by 365 so you get one two three nine seven two okay i think this part is also clear i think only one case you will have like that similarly floor payoff so this is going to be an inflow so the net amount would be this minus this okay or the formula would be this minus this plus this. Okay, so this part is clear. Now, next one is floor payoff that will come whenever it is going this 4.75. This case it will come down. So, here you can do it, it will be a uh, 0.25. So, it will be for 500 lakhs into 0.25 percent into how many days is given over here 184 divided by 366 yes this is the answer friends instead of this if you want you can take the start date as 3112 and also work out exactly the same thing only thing slightly the date will change that's all okay so please give yourself marks based on this now uh veena some you mean the question Okay, you mean I should take the sum total of all the interest? It is done in the app. It is done in the app. One minute. The total is here. It's ninety five lakhs. Here it is ninety five lakh sixty one. Okay. Hari Shankar, you took the numerator as one eighty two, but you forgot the denominator. Then the answer is wrong, Hari Shankar. You can do one thing. Here, how many lines are there? One, two, three, four, five, six lines are there. That one line or two lines, wherever you have done that mistake, you deduct marks. So if the total marks is how many marks? I think it is eight marks. Six marks for the first requirement, and you know, overall interest rate will be two, two marks. So you deduct two marks in the entire question for that. Okay. Because your two rows goes wrong because of that. No, no, no. We know if you've done it from 31, 12, 2018, nothing wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that. Okay. You can do it like that. Should I show you the alternative answer? Wait, I'll just copy paste this. Put it down. So here, instead of this, you can take the recent date as 31, 12, 2018. Then this one, this one will become 30th June, 2019, right? 2019, 31, 12, 2019, 36, 2020. I hope you understood. 31, 12, 2020, 36, 2021, and here it will be 31, 12, 2021, correct? So like this and the LIBOR rate will be the same or will it change? 786, 4.75, 4.25, 5.25. That will be correct. But I think the number of days will now change, correct? I think this is correct. This one is all correct. Here it's correct, but the denominator of leap year will come over here. This will become 366. This one will become 365. Sorry, that will also be 366. 
this one will become 365. Okay. Parvati, if you take months for interest, you deduct two marks. Actually, you should not take months. The answer goes drastically wrong. Deduct three marks for time being. Okay, it's not correct. Because it's not floating rate, right? Every day interest is relevant. So I believe you have, this is 95 lakh 10. Here it's 95 lakhs. Slight difference is coming. Veena, I hope you are done with this. Uh, uh, AA, the suggested is going by the second method. But in study material, one question is done using method one. One other question is done in the exam using method two. So you, I believe you can use both the methods given assumption. That's all. All right. Yes. Can I go to the next question now? I think we are almost done with the correction. Paper correction is an exhaustive process, friends. My brain is all exhausted now. Let's check how many are left. 5A. There's a question on mergers. Good strategy, Sarvamangala. You have left a bigger question towards the end. Okay, they have given the PBT, market value, value of original shareholders, price per share after merger and effect of share price on both the cases. Okay, so here the solution is what have you done? Let me check. Rupees and crores, EPS, market value, value of original shareholders. How did you get this value of original shareholders? I don't think you have done this. It's only the PAT that you have written over here. Market value before merger, okay, MPS after merger, you will first find out the post merger EPS. Then you will multiply with the PE ratio and then only you can find out the market value of the merged firm. This looks to be correct. All right, looks to be correct. I will anyway show you the suggested answer now. MPS before merger is given here. Market value of the company. Value of original shareholders will be nothing but the earlier value apportioned excluding synergy. All right. Okay. Price per share after merger, that is post merger EPS into P ratio, effects on share price. That will be what uh, Sarvamangala has done is also absolutely right. Okay. Perfect. So please give yourself marks now, friends. Uh, Veena, last part, this percentage change is your doubt, is it? I'll show you with Sarvamangala solution because that's how we do it in class. See, look at this, Veena. You have done market value after merger, market value before merger. Do you get a gain or a loss? So here you got a gain of 52 and here you got a loss of 9 lakhs, correct? So here in the suggested, what they have done is they have told that the share price would increase for Messrs. Vasavi by 38.1. Okay, what they have done here is final MPS after merger is 9.57. MPS before merger was how much? 6.93. So they got 38.1. We can get the same answer over here by using this equation. It has come up to 191.206 after merger minus 138.6 before merger. So the gain is 52.606. This gain has come on 138.6 divided by 138.6. You get 38 percentage. That's exactly the same answer that they have got over here. Cross check. So it's whatever profit on the base value will give you the same percentage. Vina. This divided by this. Okay. All right. So yes, friends, please give yourself marks right now. But how post merger MPS becomes different in case of target? That's because the number of shares change. Number of shares change, right? That's why. So this is, do you remember the concept of equivalent EPS? We multiplied with the exchange ratio. Exactly the same thing they're doing over here. That is to make it comparable with the earlier market price. Okay. Sarvamangala, I'll explain the value of original shareholder. Listen over here. Here, 20 crore shares was held by Vasavi. 11.25 crore shares was held by SKPD. 
total how many shares are there 31.25 so if you look at this wasavi is holding 64% share skpd is holding 36% share now what was the total market value after merger excluding synergy so what we do we take market value of wasavi plus market value of skpd take the total you get 255 crore that is actually the market value correct because of synergy they get a gain they ignore the gain ignoring the gain you get 255.24 this if you split in the ratio of 64 and 36 you get that the value of wasabi excluding synergy is 163 and value of skpd excluding synergy is 91 that is what they call it as value of original shareholders are you clear uh, sarma mangala We know if your last part has gone wrong, hold on. How many marks? Eight marks, right? So you have got four requirements, you lose two marks. All right. Now, shall I go to the next part now? Pitch presentation 5C. So you would have write introduction, team, problem, solution, marketing, sales, milestones, financing. Sarvamangala, you are good at theory, you are able to memorize it well, you will, you can give yourself full marks for it. Pitch presentation. Yes, friends. So that will come to four marks. If you write eight points, you get, uh, you can take three and a half out of four. Okay. Then you have a question on buyback. Okay. You didn't do it. That's fine, Sarvamangala. 5b let me go and take question number 5b this we have done in class so my regular batch students for you it will be straightforward because we have done exactly the same question surplus cash they want to do a buyback using equation eight marks three requirements you can give for yourself uh, two marks for requirement one two marks for requirement two impact of sorry you make it three three two three marks three marks and two marks i'll show you the solution look at the solution now 26.15, three marks if you get this correct. Three marks for the second one and two marks for the last one. Are we done or do we have more questions to correct? Question number three is pending, is it? Sarva Mangala, your answer sheet is over. We are left with question number three. 3A is again a question on merger. Okay. You left that question in option, is it? Okay. This is exactly the same as the earlier one. It is a merger related question. Okay. So they are asking you to calculate the net cost of acquisition if 60 rupees is paid, agreed exchange ratio, and the gain from acquisition. Let me take question number 3A. Okay. So net cost of acquisition is a cash paid for toll minus value of toll as a separate entity. So the gain of tail will become the cost for toll. Sorry, toll value of toll. Okay. First one, second one, net cost of acquisition. They have the number of shares is 6 lakhs. Total number of shares in long is 36 lakhs. KE, they have done it using Gordon's model, 12%. Perpetual goal, they have got the value of the merged company, MPS after merger. Long and tail. Then here you got 2,25,000. Gain from acquisition, total earnings of long plus total earnings of tall. You get the total earnings. P ratio will give you the value after merger minus value before merger will give you the gain from acquisition also. Please give yourself marks for this one now. This question is eight marks, three requirements. Again, same three marks, three marks, two marks, three, three, two. Okay.
All right. Perfect. So I believe we are all done with this part. Can I go to the next one now? Okay. Last one is 3B. That is a question from futures. Number of shares is given. Beta is given. Price per share is given. Uh, with an expectation of huge dividend. Nifty futures. Tradable lot size is given. How to hedge? So you can use the formula S0 into beta. Calculate the profit or loss. Is there a mistake in the question? Oh God, this was the same question that we had done earlier, right? If there's a mistake, friends, you get grace marks, okay? Or I would suggest you skip this question altogether uh, and we will proportionately give marks for the remaining questions. But we are in the same place where the assignment is given. See, when you go to the assignment, here you have the test series, you have the such solution there itself. See, it's given here. Okay. If you have done with 17,500 Hari Shankar, you can give yourself marks for that. If you have taken 1,75,000, you can give yourself proportionate marks. I'm not sure. But we'll do one thing then. I will, I think I understood what you're trying to say. I will do one thing. I will have to. Please check now. You might be able to see it now. Fine. So friends, I think we are done with the entire thing. Can you please take the total and tell me in the chat box how much marks you have scored now? So we can pack up our session with this now. Yes. Uh, Bhavya, you message me. I will check. It's not visible. It's in the SFM mentoring batch. There is no other batch in which I have put this. SFM mentoring batch, it is there. Uh, Bhavya, go to mentoring batch. It's available there. Okay. Yes. So friends, please do value and tell me how much marks have you scored here. Anuja, you got 58. Very good. 58 out of 92. So that is 63% Anuja. Great job. Keep it up. Others, Harishankar, 65%. Amazing. Friends, trust me, the exam will not be as you know, tricky or it can be at par. I don't think exam this time would be difficult or more tougher than this one. 45% good marks, good job, Kirtana. Eighty-four percent, Veena. Appreciation for you. Keep it up, Veena. I want the same marks in the examination. Achaya, forty-eight. Good job, Achaya. Everyone mention in percentage, okay? I'm assuming it's 48 percentage, not 48 out of 92, okay? Yes, friends, come on. Others also share it. Harishankar, you want me to unmute you? Definitely, I'll do that. Yes, I'm unmuting you now. Parvati, 44. Good job. Harishankar, can you hear me? Oh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Harishankar. Tell me. 
So in question 6b, where we have uh, calculated that uh, cap and floor uh, question. Okay. In that, uh, in the solution we have uploaded, uh, they have calculated it. Uh, the interest payments are uh, same as uh, we calculated uh, with uh, start dating uh, 31st December 2018. Sir. Same interest rate is that, but uh, okay. but they have taken the uh, cap receipts and floor payoff based on the LIBOR rate, sir, and not LIBOR plus 0.5 percent, sir. So but that's not correct. It's actually supposed to be LIBOR plus 0.5 only, actually. Uh, yes, Hari Shankar, can you hear me? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, it's actually supposed to be based on LIBOR rate. In your textbook, they have done another question with LIBOR plus 0.5. This question they have done it in a different manner. That's creating a lot of confusion. Okay. Yeah, you can stick to the solution that we have given. All right, because right. otherwise, you just check the steady material, uh, interest okay. rate derivative. That's a question. They have done it with LIBOR plus 0.5 there. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay. Fine, friends. I believe all of you have shared your marks here. So, shall we pack up our mentoring session with this now? Sarva Mangla, 56% is excellent. You could have got easily 70 Sarva Mangla. The only issues were in the initial 2 3 questions. Gargi, 58% is very good. KCR, 59%. Friends, you have to understand one thing. You are scoring this marks today. Today is what day? October 10th. That is, you still have 20, 25 days for the examination. So I believe if you can score above 40 in this examination after one more month of preparation and now with the experience of writing this exam, I am very, very sure you will be able to rock it in the November 23 examination. All right. I am going to pack up my mentoring session now. We started this two to three months back where we started with study plan, assignment, and four mock tests. We have done all that consistently, friends. Now, from here onwards, there is not going to be more of mentoring session, but there are going to be live sessions. This week, I have MTP, SCMP Super 50. Next week, I'm doing Super 25. With that, even my marathon sessions will be over, and you will have the final 10 days to study yourself at that time in my YouTube channel, I will be uploading a lot of motivation videos so that you keep getting the energy to study and take things forward. So just follow my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon. So whenever a new video comes in there, you can be aware of that. All the very best for the exam friends. Thank you so much for being very, very consistent in the mentoring. And trust me, those of you who have followed this strictly coming exam results will tell you what effort we have taken together. Thank you so much. Have a lovely time ahead, friends. Take care. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you, Veena. Let's score 70 plus. Thanks a lot, everyone. Good night.